Do you respect Putin? I do respect him. Putin's a killer. A lot of killers. We got a lot of killers. Why do you think our country's so innocent? Bill O'Reilly's use of a certain word has pissed off the Kremlin. Putin's a killer. Yep, killer. The Kremlin has demanded an apology from Fox News, and it's even hoping for an apology directed to Russian President Vladimir Putin, according to various media outlets. Putin's spokesman reportedly called the use of the word unacceptable and offensive. Over the weekend, President Donald Trump avoided criticizing Russian President Vladimir Putin, despite being provoked by Fox News anchor Bill O'Reilly in an interview. Since taking office, Trump has so far been consistent with his campaign promise of trying to reset relations with Russia. The word detente became part of international diplomatic vocabulary at the end of the 1960s, less than a decade after the U.S. and Soviet Union put the world on edge during the Cuban Missile Crisis. So, both Trump and Putin vocally say they are ready to lead a pragmatic relationship. But detente has always been about mutual concessions, and that's where the mission of resetting this time could hit a snag, particularly because of Trump's hostile rhetoric towards Iran and China, both of which, as we all know, are Russia's close partners. From Ukraine to Syria, Tehran to Beijing, allegations of Russia's interference into U.S. election and NATO tanks on the border with Russia. Today, Washington and Moscow clearly, Simone, have a lot of disagreements. Whether those could be resolved is something we might find out soon enough. Russia has rejected U.S. President Donald Trump's accusation that Iran is a, quote, terrorist state, saying that the Kremlin does not agree with this position. The Kremlin's spokesman, Dmitry Peskov, added that Moscow and Washington have diametrically opposed views on many international issues. He also said that Russia values its, quote, partner-like relations with Iran and wants its economic ties with Tehran to further expand. Meanwhile, a Russian foreign ministry official has warned the U.S. against making any changes to a landmark nuclear deal between Iran and the B5 plus 1 group of countries in 2015. China protests U.S. sanctions on Iran. U.S. President Donald Trump slapped Iran with new sanctions Friday, February 3rd, after Iran launched a ballistic missile test earlier that week. Those being punished are 25 entities and people who allegedly provide materials to Iran that help build ballistic missiles. That includes two Chinese companies and three Chinese individuals. On Monday, February 6th, China announced it lodged a formal protest with the U.S. over the sanctions. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Liu Kong said, quote, the sanctions will not help in enhancing trust among the different parties involved and will not help in resolving international problems. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is in London today for meetings with his British counterpart Theresa May. Topping the two leaders' talks will be ways to form a joint response to confront Iran. Upon his departure for the United Kingdom, the Premier said he's hoping to craft a U.S.-led tripartite response to Iran's missile testing. Netanyahu's talks with Britain's Prime Minister come just ahead of his first White House visit with American President Donald Trump on February 15th. Netanyahu is expected to focus on ways to drum up support for a harder line to be taken against the rogue regime, as well as a 2015 international nuclear deal it signed with six world powers despite Israeli condemnation. Netanyahu has long insisted the pact will only pave Iran's path towards atomic weapons development when key restrictions expire 15 years after being implemented. While he's in the United Kingdom, the Israeli leader says other topics of discussion will include security, trade, and technology ties between the two countries. Also on the agenda are efforts to resurrect Middle East peace efforts. The Islamic Republic has unveiled another part of its domestically made military hardware. On Monday, Defense Minister Brigadier General Hossein Dehran announced that the new weapons currently under mass production are the result of the work of Iran's defense sector in the current Persian year, which ends on March 20. The unveiling ceremony was held on the 38th anniversary of the victory of Iran's Islamic Revolution. The weapons on display were the Fajr 5 guided artillery rocket, MESOC-3 shoulder-fired missile, a 40-millimeter precision grenade launcher, as well as a new carbine-caliber gun dubbed Masof, and a polymer pistol, which according to the Defense Ministry, is the lightest pistol of its kind in the world. One of the strategies of Iran's defense industries is to upgrade and diversify homegrown weapons and other defense equipment, such as the one you see behind me. The aim is to diminish dependence on the imports of such products amid continuing arms embargoes against Iran. Russia, Turkey and Iran meet to discuss details of a fragile Syrian ceasefire agreement. 
The meeting, Monday, February 6th in Kazakhstan, was held nearly two weeks after the three nations vowed to strengthen the oft-violated truce. A spokesman for Kazakhstan's foreign ministry told Al Jazeera, quote, This is about creating a mechanism to control the implementation of the ceasefire. Each side has blamed the other for violating a December ceasefire deal. While nothing was signed at Monday's meeting, an official with Russia's armed forces told TASS news agency that he hoped documents could be finalized later this month. The official described the draft regulations as, quote, complicated documents which require agreement both with the Syrian government and the opposition. Nearly six years of fighting have reduced much of Syria to rubble. A Fox News alert and a bit of saber rattling by China. This just a couple of days after the U.S. Defense Secretary James Mattis was in Tokyo saying that the U.S. would defend Japan's claim to what are called the Senkaku Islands. Well, just today, China sailed three of its warships past the Senkaku Islands. It claims them itself, as does uh, the island of Taiwan. They are disputed. The United States uh, believes that Japan has the legitimate claim. Now China has sailed its warships through Japanese waters, territorial waters, and past these Senkaku Islands. Uh, uh, this again against the backdrop of Secretary James Mattis, who was in Tokyo uh, a couple of days ago, saying that the U.S. would defend Japan's claims. We'll certainly keep an eye on this um, very interesting and developing story. The U.S. and Japan conducted a successful missile interception test, shooting down a medium-range ballistic missile from high above the Earth. On Friday, February 3rd, USS John Paul Jones successfully took out the target ballistic missile using its onboard Aegis missile defense system and an SM-3 Block 2A interceptor. The test joint exercise between the U.S. and Japan took place off the west coast of Hawaii. While no information on the duration or trajectory of the flight was given, the Aegis system is designed to intercept a ballistic missile around the middle of its flight when the missile is at its highest point above the Earth. Vice Admiral Jim Srang, director of the Missile Defense Agency, called the test a critical milestone, adding that the system, quote, will ultimately improve our ability to defend against increasing ballistic missile threats around the world. Security forces are searching southern Israel for the remnants of a missile shot into the state by terrorists in Gaza this morning. As a Hamas spokesperson vowed there will be an even greater escalation of violence in the near future. Fortunately, no Israelis were hurt in the attack. The Israeli army immediately retaliated by firing tank rounds at Hamas targets in the northern Gaza Strip. The latest outbreak of terrorist shelling comes as a senior defense official is warning that the Islamist group has been able to completely restock its weapons arsenal and restore its fighting abilities, left depleted in its 2014 conflict with Israel. A spokesperson for the terrorists' military wing is declaring today that the level of Israeli concern proves Hamas's success during the 50 days of fighting. The Hamas mouthpiece then boasted that even larger forces will fall in the near future. The U.S. Embassy in Baghdad said on Monday it has limited the movement of its personnel after receiving credible threats of possible attacks on hotels frequented by Westerners. The embassy also said, as a reminder, U.S. citizens should maintain a heightened sense of security awareness and take appropriate measures to enhance their personal security at all times when living and working in Iraq. U.S. authorities advise citizens to avoid traveling to Iraq, citing the risk of being kidnapped by armed political groups or criminal gangs and bombings by the group Islamic State. U.S. President Donald Trump has reaffirmed his support for NATO while renewing his call on member countries to make their full and proper financial contributions to the alliance, which he said many of them have not been doing. Trump made the remarks on Monday during a speech at the U.S. Central Command in Florida. The remarks came one day after his phone call with NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg, where, according to a White House statement, they discussed how to encourage all NATO allies to meet their defense spending commitments. NATO members are expected to spend 2% of their GDP on defense, but only five of 28 countries have actually met that goal in the past few years. President Trump also agreed to meet with his counterparts at a NATO summit in Europe 
in May. Radical Islamic terrorists are determined to strike our homeland. It's gotten to a point where it's not even being reported. And in many cases, the very, very dishonest press doesn't want to report it. They have their reasons, and you understand that. President Trump's White House clearly isn't happy with the way the media treats terrorism. In defense of Trump's comments, the White House published a list of terror attacks that it says were underreported in Western media. Some of the listed attacks were heavily covered by the media. Others resulted in few or no casualties, and many of the attacks happened overseas. The U.S. media does have a bit of a blind spot when it comes to international terrorism. Terrorism. 538 researched which terrorist attacks are covered by Western media. It found attacks in affluent and Western countries tend to get more coverage than those in poor or non-Western countries. On Tuesday, a federal appeals court will reportedly hear oral arguments on the U.S. Justice Department's request to overturn a block on Donald Trump's immigration ban. According to a statement, the three-judge panel within the San Francisco-based Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals will hold an hour-long telephone session starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday. The session was scheduled just as the Trump administration filed a new brief arguing that national security concerns make it improper for the courts to intrude on executive branch decisions. Last week, in a lawsuit brought by the states of Washington and Minnesota, U.S. District Court Judge James Robart halted several key aspects of Trump's week-old executive order. German city of Leipzig, where locals have seemingly taken a leaf out of Donald Trump's book, fearing for their security. Residents of one apartment complex have put up a one and a half meter high fence as a refugee shelter is being built across the street from them. And the barrier's erection well, it wasn't cheap, costing around 20,000 euro. Building fences and walls, of course, have been deemed a short-term solution for some across Europe as the continent continues to struggle with the huge influx of migrants. Some Super Bowl ads reliably aim for the funny bone, but this car ad had an environmental twist. It's hard to be an eco-warrior, but it's easy to drive like one. Intr Other advertisers took a serious approach with themes to counter America's current strained mood. Coca-Cola revived an old ad appealing to ethnic and racial diversity. While beer maker Anheuser-Busch offered a reminder of its founder's immigrant origins and the supposed hostility he found in his new country a century ago. But a chain of lumber stores bluntly visualized how a Mexican mother and child of today would brave the obstacles in crossing the U.S. border. TV viewers, however, couldn't see its optimistic climax, showing that even high walls may have open gates because the Fox network which aired the game deemed it too controversial. So the ad's conclusion was only available online. The company that helped produce it says it was money well spent. The fact that we're, we're having this discussion about uh, about the ad and about 84 Lumber is, is certainly one positive attribute of doing a Super Bowl ad. And then the second thing is that, you know, people will hopefully see the message and say, you know, I, I want to work for a company like that. I want to be associated with a company like that. While Airbnb, the shared lodging business, was able to place a last minute commercial in direct response to the Trump administration's travel restrictions on immigrants and refugees. Several Super Bowl ads focused on diversity, acceptance and immigration. But Airbnb took it a step further, turning its ad into action by pledging short term housing for people in need. On Sunday, the company launched a campaign to help 100,000 people over the next five years, starting with refugees, disaster survivors and workers in disaster areas. This campaign comes on the heels of President Donald Trump's immigration ban. Hours after that ban was signed, Airbnb's CEO tweeted that the company would provide free housing to refugees and anyone not allowed in the U.S. The Posters criticizing Pope Francis have been seen all over Rome throughout the weekend. The signs ask the Pope, where is your mercy? It's meant to suggest that the pontiff is too liberal and not in line with traditional Catholic values. Now, 7% of priests in Australia's Catholic Church were accused of sexually abusing children 
Between 1950 and 2010, Cardinal Pell has been accused of sexual offences for a second time, but has constantly denied the allegations. The abuse allegedly took place in more than 1,000 Catholic institutions. According to the report, nearly 4,500 people, mostly children, were abused between 1980 and 2015. On Monday, Julian Assange took to Twitter to ask the UK and Sweden to restore his freedom. The WikiLeaks founder has taken asylum in the Ecuadorian embassy in London for over four years in order to avoid legal troubles with the US, Sweden and the UK. If he were to leave the embassy, Assange would likely be arrested by British police and extradited to Sweden for prosecution. A year ago, the UN declared that the UK and Sweden were acting unlawfully by depriving Assange of his freedom. In Venezuela, where an estimated 110,000 people in 2015 were living with HIV, a shortage of critical medicines, including life-saving anti-HIV drugs, threatens a country already in crisis. In June of 2016, a network of Venezuelans living with HIV sought urgent humanitarian aid from the Geneva-based Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis, and Malaria. The petition notes that in addition to a severe stockout of antiretroviral treatment, Venezuela lacks a necessary supply of condoms, HIV test kits, or basic supplies to diagnose and treat tuberculosis. The global fund leaders, who notably took six months to reply to the original urgent request for help, have responded that they have liaised with our partner network to see who might be in a position to help. If you owned a Vizio Smart TV anytime after February 2014, it might have been spying on you. A complaint filed Monday by the U.S. Federal Trade Commission said the smart TVs used software that spied on owners' viewing habits without their permission. Vizio then sold that data to third parties. In a statement to Endgadget, the company said the program didn't pair viewing data with personally identifiable information. Vizio has already decided to settle. Among other things, the company will pay the FTC $1.5 million and delete all data collected before March 2016. Public services think tank Reform in the UK is suggesting that thousands of public sector jobs be replaced by artificial intelligence. Reform suggests that 90% of Whitehall's 137,000 administrative staff could be replaced with artificially intelligent chatbots by 2030, saving 2.6 billion pounds a year. The report also calls for smart machines and autonomous robots to do the job of 250,000 public sector workers. The report quotes evidence that estimates 30% of nurses' activities could be automated, and a similar proportion for doctors in some specialties. A girl in Bangladesh might be the first female to have tree man syndrome. At age 10, Sahana Khatun has bark-like growths on her face, but doctors are still trying to confirm whether she has the disease. If Sahana does have tree man syndrome, she will become one of just a few individuals worldwide to suffer from the rare genetic condition. Some of Sahana's doctors at Dhaka's Medical College Hospital, however, have expressed hope that she's just displaying a milder form of the disease and that she'll have a quick recovery. Sahana's father, Muhammad Shajan, hopes the disease passes, saying, quote, we are very poor. My daughter lost her mother when she was only six. I really hope the doctors will remove the barks from my beautiful daughter's face. The first Bangladeshi to suffer from the disease is 27-year-old Abu Bajandar. He recently received treatment to remove the bark-like warts from his hands. Blue blubber jellyfish, blanket and beach in Australia. Bet you can't say that five times fast. Residents near Queensland's Deception Bay recently found thousands of blue blubber jellyfish stranded along the beach in the area's largest jellyfish bloom in 25 years. Witnesses say the phenomenon looked like bubble wrap covered the sand. One woman took pictures of the creatures after noticing an unusual color in the water. Marine biologist Lisa Ann Gershwin said she was surprised by the images because it's unusual to see jellyfish wash up in such massive numbers. Gershwin said the phenomenon could have been caused by a combination of warmer waters, a surplus of nutrients, and a lack of predators. Astronomers have observed a large black hole consuming the remains of a destroyed star for an unusually long period of time, according to a NASA news release. This activity reportedly lasted for about a decade, or as the release states, more than 10 times longer than any observed episode of a star's death by black hole. 
The discovery was made when three telescopes, the Chandra X-ray Observatory, the SWIFT satellite, and the European Space Agency's XMM Newton detected a tidal disruption event, or TDE, wherein the tidal forces due to the intense gravity from a black hole can destroy an object, such as a star, that wanders too close. During such events, as some of the stellar debris travels inwards to be ingested by the black hole, the material heats up to millions of degrees and generates a distinct X-ray flare. Scientists suspect that the extraordinarily long period of bright flaring could mean, according to the release, that this was either the most massive star ever to be completely torn apart during one of these events or the first where a smaller star was completely torn apart. The sky over Lake Michigan sparkled when a meteor streaked by. Police dash cams in Wisconsin and Illinois captured these images at about 1.30 this morning. Some folks heard a sonic boom. It's not known if the meteor landed in the lake or broke up in the sky. One abandoned baby deer just didn't want to leave her rescuer's side when he released her into the wild. Outdoorsman Darius was watching a family of deer from his home when he noticed a fawn with an injured leg left behind. Darius brought her in and nursed her back to health. He even made a leg brace out of an oatmeal box and bottle fed her every four hours. She even formed a special relationship with Darius's pets. Once the fawn's legs were fully here, Darius tried multiple times to release her back into the wild, but she always came back to Darius's side. She's following me. until one night when the deer spotted her mom and rejoined her family. 